Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the HPE ProLion DL360 Gen 10 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on processors, but in this series as a whole, we're going to go over RAM, drives, both hard drives and solid state drives. We're going to show you how to install VMware, how to install Microsoft uh, Windows Server operating system. We're going to show you the RAID. We're going to show you the network cards, plus a ton more. So click that like, smash that subscribe. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL360 Gen 10 server. Let's hop in. This video will be specifically focused on processors. So uh, what we're going to do as a whole is we are going to uh, cover the uh, different types of compatibilities for the processors, the socket type. Uh, we're going to show you how to physically install one of the processors. We're going to uh, tell you processors that we recommend, and we kind of break it down into three categories. So we'll just uh, go ahead and hop in with some of the, uh, the general specs. So uh, there are two CPU sockets inside your uh, DL360 Gen 10 is going to be an LGA3647 socket. So what that means is it takes Intel scalable first gen and second gen processors. So what does that mean or what does that actually, you know, what, what, what procs can I put inside? So for the Intel first gen scalable, that means you're going to get Intel Silver 4100 series, Intel Gold 5100 series, Intel Gold 6100 series, and Intel Platinum 8100 series. So those are all the first gen scalables. Now on the second gen scalable side, it's gonna be just the next level up. So you have 4,200 silver, 5,200 gold, 6,200 gold, and 8,200 platinum. Um, so you can kind of see how the first gen moves up to the second gen. Um, and as a whole, uh, second gen scalable procs have come down quite a bit uh, in the last few months specifically. Uh, they were really still kind of selling at its uh, prime price for the, you know, the last few years. But now that the uh, fourth gen scalable procs have officially come out with the gen 11 server line, uh, and AMD has some wonderful epic procs for that matter. Uh, some of the second gen scalable has come down to a more reasonable price point to make these a great, great server uh, as far as uh, on the market right now on the U server side. Uh, this is one of our uh, best sellers uh, and one of, the, one of the ones that people love the most as far as a bang for your buck because when you do get like say a gen 11 new server, which by the way, we do sell uh, gen 10 plus and gen 11 new servers. So contact us if you need one of those, but those are gonna be much, much more expensive uh, compared to a used gen 10 uh, is just a great deal right now. Uh, the Gen 10s and Gen 9s are really the sweet spot uh, on the market as a whole. So uh, now as far as the processors that we recommend, because people ask us all the time, like, hey, you know, what procs do you think we should throw in here? We've broken it down into three different groups. We have low-end procs, we have value procs, and we have high-end procs. So this is really kind of based off what your application is, right? So on the low-end side, there's three silvers that we like on the first gen scalable side. That's going to be your 4110, your 4114, and your 41 16. That's going to be a 2.1 gigahertz, 2.2 gigahertz, and a 2.1 gigahertz, 8 core, 10 core, 12 core. Great processors as a whole that are honestly really, really budget friendly. Uh, you could pop two of them in for not too much money at all, uh, but they're going to be your lower end proc. Now there's three value procs that we recommend, and they're all first gen scalable processors, and that's going to be Intel Gold 6126, 6132, and 6142. All these are still budget friendly processors. Uh, they're going to cost more than your low-end ones, but they're not going to break the bank. They're going to be faster speeds overall and higher cores. So all three of these are 2.6 gigahertz and they're going to be 12 core, 14 core, 16 core. So this is a nice little sweet spot right now where if you don't need uh, you know, a 20 core processor or something like that, you can put in uh, some of these and get uh, still great speed, not the fastest speed, but still a great sweet spot speed. And it's gonna be very, very budget friendly. So this is a spot where a lot of people, especially home lab guys, like to build with uh, because this is again, uh, just has a little bit of everything in it, right? So now on the high end side, uh, we'll tell you our three recommendations. Now there's three high end procs that we recommend and that's going to be moving on to the scalable second gen and that's going to be your gold 6242R, your gold 6248R, your platinum 8256 which will be 20 core, uh, 24 core and 4 core and you might go why'd you pick the 4 core? Well because it's 3.8 gigahertz and if you have to worry about Microsoft licensing and you only can have so many cores this is a great option that's going to be uh, fast speed low cores so I threw it in there just in case uh, you know for that specific application. 
application, whereas these other two are going to be 3.1 and 3.0. So you know, you couple 3.1 gigahertz with 20 cores, or you know, uh, 3.0 with 24 core. That's going to be uh, put two of those in. That's going to be just massive, massive performance overall, and just going to be a, a great, great processor for your high end side. But of course, it's going to cost more than your budget friendly procs that we showed you on the low end and the value side. Okay. All right. Well, now that we know a little bit more about the types of procs that we recommend, uh, the different compatibilities, uh, the sockets, all that good stuff. Let's show you how to actually install them. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear and be right back. Depending on how much thermal grease was put on before, sometimes there'll be just a mess around and you just don't want that to get into your pens. So this is very helpful for just keeping everything clean. Um, and then we're going to need uh, thermal paste to put on to our new CPU that we install. And then to remove the heat sink, you need a T30 bit. This is not a regular Phillips head. It is a T30 bit. So that is uh, something I'd like to note. And personally, I'm always a big fan of the uh, the manual ones as opposed to the electric ones. You can use either either or, but I just get a way better feel for the uh, the motherboard and the heatsink on the motherboard with the manual one. So I personally recommend that. So all right, let's toss everything to the side and let's go ahead and open her up. So pop your latch and remove the lid pretty much like any server you've ever been in before. So you will notice uh, the heat sinks. There's two heat sinks, as we said before, CPU one, CPU two. Uh, we're going to remove, there's four screws right here. So one, two, three, four. And then there's two holes that um, actually the uh, little tips that they come through. So when you install them, it kind of helps you to line everything up. Uh, so let's go ahead and just show you how easy it is to remove these. I always like to start with the middle two first, and then I like to do the outer two last. And again, this is why I like the uh, manual one. You can really feel the heat sink coming off the motherboard and getting loosened up so you can tell if it's uh, still in there or not. So that's a big fan of that. So all right, now we'll do the two outside ones. All right, so now that we've got our screws uh, all loosened up, we're just gonna take this and lift it straight up. And once I get all the way up, I like to flip it over just in case there's any type of thermal paste that's sticking out the sides, which I don't see any, but just to be careful, I always like to do that because as soon as you lift this up, your uh, pins are exposed. So this is where we just have to be careful uh, that there's no thermal paste that'll fall in there because that's uh, the, the worst thing that could happen and we just don't wanna damage our system. So we'll lift this straight up and then flip this over, okay? So you'll notice that the uh, the CPU is actually hooked to the heatsink. Uh, Dell 14th gen servers uh, have a very, very similar uh, setup with the uh, clip here that is separate from the heatsink. So we'll show you how to actually remove that as a whole. There's uh, the points right here that you're just gonna have to push out. So we'll start with this one over here. So just push this in and it'll uh, pop out over here. And then we're gonna do this clip right here. And now this side is loosened up, okay? So now we're gonna do the same deal over here. Just push this in, it'll come down, and then this clip right here. And with the glove, it actually makes it a little difficult sometimes. All right, there we go. All right, so now it is completely removed and you can see that the thermal paste isn't too bad. We're gonna need to clean it off nonetheless. But now the, uh, uh, the CPU is just with the, the clip as a whole and you can see everything is completely exposed so let's be careful. So what we're gonna do here is um, flip this over. I just want any thermal paste to fall in. So you see the black clips right here. When you pull this back, you can remove the CPU. This plastic is uh, somewhat flexible, so it does have a little give so that you can just pull it back and unhook one side and then you can just pull the other side out. So I'm gonna put this over here and then just set our CPU down. Okay, so uh, next thing I want to do is I wanna clean everything up. So, and I'm not gonna clean it over the, uh, uh, the exposed pin, so I'll do it off screen over here, but we're just going to clean this uh, clip, get the old thermal paste off, and then just get everything back to square. And then we're going to, you can see our heat sink has some old thermal paste, so same deal. We just wanna wipe this off. And again, I don't do it over the server just in case anything flakes off. We just don't want those exposed pins to get damaged, but now we have a nice and clean heat sink, okay? So, all right, uh, what we will do now is we will take our new CPU and we are going to install it onto the clip. So this is where people start asking, well, which way do I install it and how do I do it? Well, there is 
a gold triangle right here uh, that is very, it's a helpful guide as a whole that's just gonna kinda lead us the whole way. So if you look over here, there's a carved out triangle on this side, so we are going to match these up, okay? Which means it's gonna go this way. So we are just going to slide this in right here. And then when we go to set this down, again, it's kind of flexible, so we can pull this back and get this clipped in. And then now what I always like to do is I flip it over just to make sure it's fully hooked in there, and it is. Um, and so now we got this hooked on to the clip. All right, so now we want to take our clip with the CPU and install it back on to the heatsink. So there's two main holes that you're gonna line up. So we're just gonna push those in right there and over here as well. And when we do that, we need to also set up our clip up here. So that just clipped in, push this in. So we got the top on, come back down here, push this one in and pull our clip over. And I'm trying to be gentle with it because you just you know just always want to be safe with the the clip as a whole. All right, so now that our CPU is on our clip, I'm going to set it over here to the side. We are going to apply our messy, messy thermal paste. So we'll take our top off, and you really don't have to put a ton on here. We get the big tubes just because we do uh, so many servers. But you're just going to put a very small amount in the middle, and that's about it. Um, and then I kind of like to wipe the extra off, and then I'll clean it off on the rag over here. But that's about it, that's all you need to do. And then, the nice thing about it, some people will use the uh, little plastic spreaders and they'll wipe it around, which is fine, you can definitely do that. What we'll do is we'll push it onto the heat sink and the heat sink, there's no space in between it. We'll just push it and spread it around nice and evenly. So we'll show you exactly how to do that. So when you go to install this clip with the CPU onto the heat sink. There's uh, only one way you can really do it, but the easiest way to line it up is this piece right here that has the triangle in the corner. Uh, that is um, the way that is the easiest to line up because these two holes could technically be like this. And so you really wanna make sure that the triangle gets into this triangle over here. That's to me the, the first part that I wanna put in. Um, and then the two holes and everything will line up. So I'm gonna start with the triangle and then line everything else up from there. So that's how I recommend personally doing it. Okay, and so now our clip with our CPU is on the heatsink, so I always still flip it over to be safe, just to make sure we're 100% on and we're all good. So now we're just gonna put our heatsink back onto here, and this is pretty easy, because uh, especially with the performance one, you got the big side over here, so we're just gonna line everything back up and just come straight down over our uh, two holes right here, okay? All right, so now that we've got it into position, we're gonna screw it down. So I'm gonna start with the outside ones, and then I'm gonna do the inside ones. And so you can see as a whole, this really isn't that uh, hard of an upgrade. You do have to just make sure to do a couple of things just to be safe. Uh, you do need to make sure you have a T30 bit as well. Um, but for the most part, again, if you're uh, at home and you're you know, wondering if you can do this in your home lab, yeah, you can definitely do this. Um, and if you're a data center, you can definitely do this. Um, and if you need any um, CPUs or if you want a custom built HPE, Dell, uh, Cisco, IBM, Supermicro, uh, we'd love the opportunity to earn your data center, your home lab's business. Please email us at sales at cloudengine.com, at sales at cloudengine.com. We custom build the new and used. And as I mentioned uh, right now, Gen 9, Gen 10 uh, is a great sweet spot. Uh, we stock a ton of them. Take care, guys.